Hello again, Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID study, giving you our update on the 16th of June. And it's been a bit of a wild week, really, with lots going on and announcements by the government, etc. But the news is that we are still seeing rates increasing. Around about 15,000 uh, cases a day is our estimate based on your reports. But the good news is that this isn't going up as fast as it was. So people are asking me last week why I was rather downbeat and um, I apologize for that. This is the nature of epidemiology. We do follow the data and there was no doubt things have been going uh, wrong direction very fast for the last few weeks. And we just have to follow what's going on and be truthful about it. Um, but let's look at the uh, this in more detail. Let's break down these figures for you. You can see that uh, the rates are starting to slow a little bit, but there's a clear division again between the unvaccinated, uh, the people who have had one jab, and the people who are really very well protected with two jabs and you can see on this graph here and remember that you're not protected at all for about 10 days after uh, that first jab and vaccination is playing a big role in what's going on with these figures and we have a new feature on the app which is giving a vaccination map across the country to show how efficiently this is being rolled out and uh, you, can, you can access that now. And it is showing differences across the country. So uh, we've seen the highest rates of vaccination in Wales and some of the lowest uh, rates in London and the Southeast. Now, some of this is just due to the nature of the populations and age bands, etc. But in general, rural areas have done better than uh, urban areas. Now, let's look at the figures for Wales because they definitely never got a, a big peak and seems to be leveling off nicely there and, and that's where they've been ahead of the game in terms of vaccination and they've now got 55 percent of the Welsh adult population fully vaccinated with the two shots and about 88 uh, percent with at least one shot and that's about 10 percent more than the other nations and shows that they are several weeks ahead of uh, the rest of the country and gives us an idea that this is providing uh, protection against uh, the current predominant variant, which is the Delta variant. Now, rates that have been the most worrying in the past, the northwest of the country and Scotland, they're still going up, but you can definitely see signs that they're starting to level off. So that's definitely hopeful. And I mentioned I was very worried about London two weeks ago where the R value suddenly shot up. Again, that's uh, looking like it's starting to um, slow down. All this uh, is boding reason well, certainly looking at a better picture than it was last week. Now, let's just put this in context again. Um, how do these confirmed cases, which are a slight underestimate that every government produces, comparing against our uh, European neighbours. And you remember we were one of the lowest in Europe uh, about three or four weeks ago. And if you look at the graph now, we are amongst the highest. And in fact, we are higher than all our uh, neighbours I was, was talking about, where people tend to go on holiday. So France, Spain, Italy, uh, Germany, etc. So there is going to be a review of uh, travel plans and hopefully um, the government will look at this data and look at the relative risks and uh, make a decision. And some people have asked me, why is it that uh, many countries allow their citizens back uh, with uh, if they've been fully vaccinated into the country without the need for expensive PCR tests. And UK doesn't. 
Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but there's no doubt they do work just as well in other countries as they work uh, in the UK. So where are we going to be in a few weeks time? Well, if we look at the way past uh, waves have come and gone, I would be predicting that this should be peaking in around 10 to 14 days time and then start to fall so that uh, by four weeks we are much below the level we are at now and something much more manageable. That's, that's if all goes well and of course um, I don't have a crystal ball, it's just my best guess. But uh, I think uh, this suggests that this should be the end of this summer wave. Uh, it doesn't mean there won't be other ones or, or outbreaks uh, happening around the country. Let's talk about symptoms of COVID at the moment. And because of your data, every day reporting what's going on, we can get an up-to-date picture of what the virus is, is causing in people. So we have a snapshot here of what's been happening since the beginning of May. And we have uh, a list of the top five symptoms. Now, these are not necessarily the symptoms that best predict whether you have it. And uh, it's, it's not a refined analysis. It's not necessarily related to the uh, new Delta variant. It's just what we're seeing in the, the vast majority of uh, cases that are testing positive with a PCR test. And if we look at the, the list, we see headache is still there as number one in about 60% of people. But we're seeing uh, runny nose and sore throat becoming uh, much more common going up that list, as well as sneezing, which is often uh, confused with uh, hay fever. And we're seeing uh, persistent cough is the only one of the uh, government classic symptoms that makes the top five. Now, fever uh, is now down at number seven and loss of smell number nine. And even further down is uh, shorts of breath. So we have to really reevaluate what we think of these classical symptoms of COVID now and pay much more attention. Realize there is a, a difference between people who have never been vaccinated and people who have had, say, one shot because we are seeing slightly more um, fever. It just makes it to number five in people who have never had uh, any um, uh, vaccine. But still, we're seeing a very different uh, picture here and we'll keep you posted as that changes. And I think it, it, it gives everyone a warning that if you are feeling unwell, you've got cold-like symptoms, then uh, if there's no, no other reason, assume it is likely to be COVID, keep yourself away until their symptoms have gone and as a minimum, take a lateral flow test and uh, check in on the app and get a, a PCR test. And it's about time the government, uh, after a year and a half, changed the uh, list of classic symptoms when you dial uh, NHS 111, etc. We do need a much broader, more flexible approach to this as the virus changes and the populations change. So, in summary, uh, this has been a much better week than it was last week. I think uh, we can start to see an end to this uh, little mini wave in the young. And the extra time we've got should uh, be able to squash this from getting uh, out of control. We've got some great examples of how Wales, by being extra vaccinated, seems to be having uh, less problems. Really important that you keep logging through the app for us, uh, telling us about your vaccine experience, telling us about these symptoms. And also um, key, so we learn about these hotspots and in, in the app, you'll, you'll be getting data on this. These are our estimated hotspots. They're not always accurate, but uh, a lot of the time they are. And we, for example, had some successes in Kirklees and Sunderland where we were able to pick up these hotspots uh, a long time before the government were, and that is, is a great benefit to everybody. So do keep logging your symptoms, do keep logging where you are, and we can stay ahead of this. Okay, um, if, if you like this, uh, click on like, 
accept notifications so you get the next video and stay safe and thanks for logging.